Hello, YouTube friends. This is Elisa King coming on here from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Today, I'm going to share with you my own experience on how I was able to find an effective natural remedy for my recurring urinary tract infection problem or UTI. So back in 2003, I experienced severe urinary tract infection. I experienced burning sensation every time I urinated or emptied my bladder. And urination became more frequent and it was painful as well. And there was little that was really coming out every time I uh, went to the bathroom for to urinate. So, Obviously, I went to see a doctor and the doctor prescribed me an antibiotic called Macrobid or Nitroforentoin. And the doctor explained to me that it was, uh, Macrobid is the first line of defense against UTI. And every time that I got UTI, uh, Macrobid was always uh, prescribed by the doctor. But after almost a decade of experience such, experiencing such recurring UTI, I went to see um, an environmental health specialist. And that doctor uh, took the time to request for a urine culture test so that uh, he would know what was the bacteria that was causing the problem. And the re test results showed that it was E. coli that was the causing UTI in my body. So I got curious and started my own uh, research about E. coli and UTI. And this is what I found out in my own uh, readings about E. coli and UTI. So research shows that this E. coli uh, can activate the brush cells that's lining our urethra. Now, these brush cells that are lining our urethra has, have receptors that can be activated by E. coli and it causes the, the activation of the receptors cause the burning sensation. That's why when we have urinary tract infection, it just means that we have an overpopulation of E. coli in our bladder and those E. bacteria come with our urine when we urinate and as our urine passes through the urethra, the E. coli activates the receptors of the brush cells in, your, in our urethra so that we feel those burning sensation and it's very painful. So it was already in my mind that UTI is caused by overpopulation of E. coli uh, in my system. And as the years go by, the frequency of the infection has increased. I would experience UTI not only once or twice in a year, but I would have it four or five times in a year. And the uh, in, interval uh, between infection became shorter and shorter. So my family physician changed the antibiotic into something that's stronger than the macrobiot. And it was at this point that I started to be concerned about my health. That the doctor has to give me a stronger uh, antibiotic. Uh, to me, my understanding was that the E. coli or the bacteria that's in my system is becoming uh, resistant to uh, macrobid. And what I fear most, of course, is that I don't want the bacteria, the E. coli in my system to become a superbug. 
because it can't be killed anymore with um, simple antibiotics. Uh, his approach as an environmental health specialist, his approach to medical treatment is uh, based on uh, the idea that uh, it's the root cause of the disease that has to be addressed, not just the symptoms. So, for example, with this infection, he would look at it, uh, he would look at the my, gut microbiome. Uh, and it was at this point that I remember the lectures on probiotics by the environmental health specialist that I consult with before for a different disease. And, but he was giving lectures to his patients and one of his lectures was on probiotics. And this environmental health specialist happens to be also a clinical professor at the University of Alberta Hospital but he, he is already retired. For example, his treatment for this particular uh, situation is to look at the imbalance of the bad and beneficial bac bacteria present in the gut microbiome. So that's how he would address it, meaning to say that there is, there is an infection because there is an overpopulation of the bad bacteria, which in this case is the E. coli. Well, believe it or not, we are supposed to have a E. coli in our system as well, but not just too much of it in our system. So we are supposed to have a balance between the bad and the good bacteria in our system. So Using my knowledge in insect ecology, you know, I was an entomologist uh, during my undergraduate, in my undergra undergraduate degree. And so in our ecology, insect ecology class, I know that um, there is this, uh, the natural regulation of population, insect po population. And that it's a result of the interaction between the the bad and the good insects. So I was thinking that there is an overpopulation of E. coli, which is a, uh, considered as a bad bacteria in this case now. So I was thinking that uh, I have to control uh, the overgrowth of E. coli in my body. Um, to to uh, control the urinary tract infection. And so I thought that I should increase the population of the good bacteria in my system so that the E. coli, there's, not, oh, there's no overgrowth of the E. coli population in my system. That was the principle that I was thinking. So, so with that principle in my mind, I thought about the mother in the apple, uh, organic apple cider uh, vinegar. Uh, this uh, vinegar, this Bragg's, Bragg's apple cider uh, vinegar. Uh, it has a mother, uh, like this, this one that stays at the bottom of it. And then when you shake it, it makes your vinegar uh, kind of cloudy, okay? So, so I learned from the lectures on probiotics that uh, the mother of the apple, organic apple, apple cider vinegar contains lots of strains of beneficial bacteria. And we often refer to it as probiotics. So the good bacteria present in that apple cider, organic apple cider vinegar, um, that's uh, coming from the mother, okay, in that uh, apple cider vinegar. So to my understanding, the good bacteria that's present in that organic apple cider vinegar will help 
or, or will help control the overgrowth of the E. coli population in my system. You will know that an apple cider vinegar uh, has the beneficial bacteria if you can see those mother that stays at the bottom of the bottle. Okay, so that's how you would recognize that there is uh, the presence of beneficial bacteria in that apple cider vinegar. So, so what I did was every time that I would feel that there's that I'm going to have a urinary tract infection because for so many years that I have urinary tract infection coming back again and again, I would already know uh, the the feeling uh, when I would have it, and so every time that I would feel that, I would immediately add one fourth teaspoon of uh, organic apple cider vinegar that has mother in it to my uh, water, okay, glass of water. And when I found this natural remedy that I have, I did not experience, uh, I, I mean, I did not go and see the doctor again because uh, basically the apple cider vinegar that I use uh, was effective enough to control the population of E. coli in my system. Now, I am sharing this to you, not as a medical uh, advice to you. Uh, I'm just sharing this that in the sense that um, this, I found this to be effective uh, in my uh, situation. So uh, I'm just sharing to you how I came to find, you know, what was the process that I went through to be able to uh, find a solution to my recurring urinary tract infection. Okay, so that's it. Friends, and I hope that you will be able to find something uh, useful in what I've shared to you uh, today. And if you like the uh, con content, because I will be sharing more of this, like things like this in my future videos. And if you like to know more about it, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Elisa and John King YouTube channel. Thank you very much. Bye for now.